welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I'm going to be telling you how I studied for and took the TMC and the CSC and passed on the very first try. So let's jump right into it. Um, so I started studying for the TMC before I even graduated school. My last semester of college we had an entire course dedicated to just test prep. Now what we did is we took practice um, board exams one week and then we would spend the rest of the week writing out rationales on the ones that we got wrong. So basically we would see the results and see what we got wrong and then look over it and then we would write like a little paper like a sentence or two not very much on why the answer was incorrect and why the correct answer is correct if that makes sense it kind of helps you put the pieces together in your head and it helps it stick really well so from the first test we took you know obviously my page was pretty long because i got a lot of answers wrong but the more tests that i took you know it would go shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter so it really helps you think about the different processes how they want you to answer why the answer is correct why the wrong answer is not correct and it just it really helps you think about it and put the pieces together and it's a good way to help it stick the very first test that we took was the free practice test on the nbrc website they have a free practice test for every single one of their exams so we took that free test first and then we did the rationales on that and then our program um i guess it was deducted out of our um like tuition but they signed us up for a site called lindsey jones and we took the rest of the practice tests on that website for the rest of the semester everything that i'm talking about i'll link down below by the way but lindsey jones the way that it's set up is it's set up to be more difficult than the actual exam uh and it is it really is a lot more difficult but be careful though because some of lindsey jones's you know reasoning as to why some of her things are correct are wrong because and i remember one very distinctly it was um like you walk in on a patient and they're not responding or whatever and what is the first thing you do and obviously because of bls protocol acls protocol you're supposed to check for a pulse lindsay jones's correct answer was begin rescue breaths now that is not correct and our teacher would tell us you know that is wrong um you know not every study material is perfect there are going to be some uh discrepancies in every material that you use so but for the most part lindsey jones was very correct and it was also very helpful especially because her material was more challenging and she also had practice csc material on her website and i will get to that whenever we talk about the csc in a little bit so something else that i used to practice for the tmc is this book it I loved this book it teaches you or not teaches you but it kind of like refreshes on everything so not like your Egan's book where it's just this long paragraph explaining you know how to do something why you do it where it came from you know instead of just teaching you it gives you a brief summary and kind of just jogs your memory on you know certain material and it really helped especially with you know the pharmacology which I wasn't really good with and the chest tube systems again something I wasn't very good with it just really helped with review because it doesn't go into all that detail it just kind of gets to the point and that's what I like <laughs> so if you buy this book brand new it comes with a um, like a key code for their website and what it is is it goes you register for the website and then it has um, practice questions for each chapter so what I would do is I would read you know two chapters a day and then take the practice test on those two chapters after I would read it so I'll read for you know for example chapters one and two you can go in to their website and pick the specific chapter you want the test to be on or you can just go to the bottom or go wherever and have it kind of all mixed together and not just one specific chapter if you hear that chewing my dog is chewing on a bone in the background so i'm sorry but yeah i would do that and then that would really help and it would kind of let me see where my weaknesses were again 
pharmacology that was always my biggest weakness like even in school I still really sucked at it and I sucked at it to the very end let me tell you the next bit of study material that I used was very 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 helpful like I cannot even tell you how helpful it was if you're a respiratory student you already know who respiratory coach is he has probably come to your rescue so many times and he has a program called respiratory coach um tmc boot camp it's a hundred dollars and it's like i don't know 40 something videos like several several hours on nothing but like study material things that you were going to see for or on the tmc test and he tells you how to answer things, what you need to know, what you need to look for. Just, he goes into the detail that you need without going into the detail that takes forever, if that makes sense. He does a very good job at explaining everything. He breaks it down to where you understand it so well. And I do not think I could have passed the TMC without Coach. So, Coach, if you see this, thank you. I doubt you're ever going to see it, but... Thank you anyway. So the very last study material I used for the TMC was something I had bought like probably back last fall and I totally forgot about it. It was the Respiratory Therapy Zone exam uh, prep book. I don't remember how much it was. I think it was like 50 bucks and it has different practice tests that you can take and it also gives you the rationale so you can see like you can take it and then see how you do by checking your answers in the back of the book where they have like the whole entire question listed out the correct answer and why the correct answer is correct that was I did a terrible job of, of explaining that and um, this is why I would never ever be a teacher excuse me that is very distracting you are making me stutter I'm not gonna blame you I stutter anyway so I think that was everything that I used to study for the TMC. I studied for, well, not a specific amount of time, but like for my entire last semester and then like two weeks after school is how long I studied for. I took the test and I was a nervous wreck going in there. If you saw my vlog, you know that I was literally crawling out of my skin with anxiety like it was so bad and then I passed it and it was that test was hard like it was really difficult but if you study correctly and you kind of have a good idea of how they're going to ask the questions then you'll be fine what I recommend is if your program doesn't have the whole test prep course at the end what I would do is I would take the free practice test on the NBRC website to see where you're at. Like before you start studying, just to see where you are, what your baseline is, see how you do, and then look to see where your weak spots are. They email you all of the answers, all categorized in um, like what category they are and then you can see like where you got the most wrong and study up on that the most and then take however long you want to study for and study using whatever materials you want and then i know if you're anything like me you are a broke college kid and you don't have a lot of money but the nbrc does have several practice tests that you can buy i think they're like 70 bucks and they are like the free one as close to the real thing as you can get like believe me like they are so similar to the actual test i would buy one and then after however long you want to study and then take it and then see how much you improve because you will improve once you study and you know put forth effort into learning or relearning the material because some of that stuff goes away after a while. Like some of the things that I learned in my fundamentals class about oxygen delivery and you know, um, medical gases, just like psh, gone. Okay, so now for the big one, the CSE. Every bit of information you can find out there tells you how to get ready for the TMC, how to study for the TMC, what do you have or what's going to be on the TMC, what do you need to know? There is literally almost nothing, nothing for the CSE. Like, trust me, I looked. I looked for how to study, 
what to do, what's going to be on it. Like I kind of, I already knew like how it was set up and I'll get to that in a minute. But every practice test that I had taken, I just completely failed. Like it was a miserable, miserable failure. So I was trying to find something to kind of point me in the right direction. Like how it did for the TMC where they have a plethora of information on how to pass that but there is absolutely nothing on how to pass the CSE so I was stuck like I was just completely just oh my god what am I gonna do I'm gonna fail this this is gonna be awful you are gonna be fine do not think like me be positive so what I did was I went on Facebook and I am part of the respiratory therapy break room page I think and I kind of searched up at the top on the page, um, CSE, and to see, like, if anybody recommended anything, like, how to study. There were a lot of people that recommended Kettering. I didn't even, I've never used Kettering. I don't know how it goes, how much it is. I know nothing about Kettering because I never used it. I used a, a thing called Tutorial Systems, mainly just because it was cheap. But let me tell you, it was amazing like okay so tutorial systems is $25 or $25.99 something every 30 days I only used it for about two weeks so I only paid 25 bucks studied my butt off and passed the CSC mainly just using that so how it's set up and they have TMC uh, material on there I didn't look at that at all I was mainly just looking at the sims information so they've got three different sections. They've got reviews, um, like the TMC stuff, and then the uh, the CMC or CSE prep. So what I did was I looked up, I read every chapter in the review section, every single chapter, some more than once, because mainly what the CSE is, is diagnosing and managing the diseases. So you really have to know what the symptoms of each disease are, how to manage it, how to treat it, how to diagnose it, what tests to run, what meds to give, what to look out for, what the symptoms are. You have to know all of that. So getting really comfortable with each disease and the process is going to be your best friend. And it has it all broken down for you. I think it starts with like information gathering and it tells you about the different um, O2 delivery devices and the medication, signs and symptoms, um, things like that. And then the second section is decision making. And decision making is the part that I struggled with the most. I was great with information gathering, but decision making is where I sucked. For the decision making, it told you about um, the pharmacology, the different diseases, like broken down into obstructive, trauma, head, uh, head and neck injuries, cardiac diseases, you know, those kind of things. And what I did, and I do not have a copy of it anymore, I wish I did, but what I did was after I read all of it, I went and made a Word document of each category that they had under the different diseases and you know all the different traumas and everything and I wrote down or typed up only the decision making part because I kind of already had a good idea of you know what signs and symptoms to look out for and what tests to run and you'll also learn that you know whenever you're looking at the tutorial system stuff like I'm telling you their whole site is just amazing and I would recommend them a hundred percent but what I did was for like instance like COPD I would write down how to manage acute exacerbations in the hospital how to manage um, them at home for like pulmonary rehab for head trauma I would do you know what I don't I can't I can't even tell you what I did now um, I would type it up highlight what was important and then kind of write little nuggets on the side of uh, of like I did write down some of how to like test for it some things to look out for but mainly what was on there was all of the decision making like 
what to keep the vent settings at, what medications to give. Gosh, there was just, it's been, it hasn't even been that long and I can't even think of anything that I put on there. But I basically just made myself a little study guide and I would look over it and I printed it out so that I could take it with me um, wherever I went. I didn't write it like I usually like would write my notes on my iPad because writing it would have just taken way too long. It was like 18 pages long and writing it would have taken forever. So I just typed it up and I printed it out and I brought it with me anywhere I went and I looked at it over and over again and I even brought it with me to um, my testing site and before I went in the building I kind of gave it like a brief once over. Um, but yeah, that's what I did for that for the tutorial systems. Lindsay Jones also has um, CSC prep tests on her website. I didn't use Lindsay Jones for the CSC prep mainly just because her material is so difficult it mainly only told me what I would get incorrect because I got so much wrong. Like never in my mind have I ever been told to make another decision so much in my life like than I have whenever taking the Lindsay Jones test. So I, I, unless you like the Lindsay Jones, I wouldn't suggest it. Like I wouldn't. One of my classmates did. She said that that was all she used and she really liked it, but I, I didn't like it at all. Now the prep book that I talked about earlier this bad boy, I think I had mentioned, I'm pretty sure I did, that it had a CSC prep test on their website as well. I used the CSC prep on their website a lot for practice tests because Tutorial Systems only comes with 40 practice um, situations. The prep book also comes with, I don't know exactly how many there are, but there are a lot and I used all of the feedback on there and kind of combined it with what I would see on tutorial systems. Some of their things kind of like butted heads a little bit, but again, not every material is going to have like the same information. Some of it's not gonna be right. Some of it's going to be a little too much. So just kind of use your best judgment, I guess, and do what you know is right because there were some things that I was like, you're wrong. I know this is correct. I'm going to pick it anyway. So the very last thing I did before I took my test was to see kind of where I was at was I went to the NBRC website to take the free test for the CSE exam and I went to the bathroom. I got a water. I sat down, was totally prepared to sit here for like two hours and taking it. And then I get through the first one and it says one of two complete. And I'm like, two? You only give us two? That's crap. So I took those first two and did okay. I did pretty good. And I ended up having to buy one of the $70 practice tests. And I'm really glad I did because it gives you a good idea of, you know, again, just like the TMC practice one, it gives you a really good idea of where you stand and where you're at at that very moment because it is so close to the real thing and whenever you're done you can you can only take the test once so once you um display the results once you're done you're done like you can't take it more than once but you can always go back and see the answers that you picked and see the rationale that they give as to why that answer is correct or incorrect the only downside is is that on the practice test that they have, the results, they don't give you every single option like for an answer choice. They only show you the ones that you pick and why they're correct or incorrect. So that kind of sucks, but it is what it is, it's fine. I'm really glad you did that because I failed it by six points and looking back on some of the answers I'm like why did I even why did I even pick that that like that's stupid that's stupid like I got a minus three for um a person that was going through cardiac arrest because I picked carotid massage why 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 did I pick that why why just cardio over like what just do that why did I pick cardiac massage like carotid massage like why 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 but again it was really good really good study material I'm glad I bought that 
I understand it sucks shoveling out 70 bucks for something that you can only use one time, but it was worth it. I really think it was worth it. So that was everything as far as study material that I used. I'm really extra when it comes to studying. If you've been around for a while, you know that. It worked. I mean, I me and my little extra self passed it on the first go and I'm very proud of myself. It was nice to have the last couple weeks or this last week rather to just sit down and do absolutely nothing because I'm supposed to start work next week. Hopefully I can. I'm just waiting on the state to issue my license. The state's taking forever. I have no control over that. But now that I'm done rambling about all that, I I'm going to give you some tips on what I have learned through studying and through taking these tests. So you really need to keep yourself organized. I have a planner and you guys know I love my planner. What I did was I kind of overviewed the testing material and kind of broke it down into what I wanted to study on what day. And I broke it down and I planned my days out and I didn't put so much on myself at one time because I knew that if I did a whole bunch at once, I wouldn't retain it. And I would also feel kind of pressured. And if I feel pressure, I won't do it. Like, I just, I just avoid my problem and just not even not even study that's terrible I know so I gave myself some wiggle room I had it down to where I only studied for a couple of hours a day and the rest of the day I would you know clean or run errands or do whatever I wanted so I did that for both the TMC and the CIC and my planner looks a hot mess because of how much I whited out and scratched out I got water on it at one point, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Planning is very important, at least if you're like me and you need to visually break it down so that you don't get overwhelmed. That helped me a lot. The next thing is in school, you learn so many different equations, so many different equations. Like I can't even tell you how many equations there are. There's probably hundreds. There's probably close to 200 equations. Um, granted, you don't learn every single one of them in school, but there are a lot of equations that you either sh need to know or should at least see at one point or things that ones that you may or may not use I don't know but there are a lot of equations do not waste your time trying to remember every single one of those equations do not do it like do not there are not going to be very many equations on those tests at all I think other than ideal body weight, which, you know, I needed to calculate ideal body weight for half of each test, probably. So definitely know that equation. I think I only needed to know like the ideal body weight equation and the time duration and the tank equation and maybe like one other one. I don't know, but do not waste your time learning all of those freaking equations because there's just too much and it's just a waste of time. Whatever you could be learning over materials that you that you need to look over like it's just it's just pointless so don't don't do that do however pay attention to your normal values like your cardiac pressures your hemodynamic values your um renal values and your um electrolytes do remember those those are important those are good um note card material so if you're a note card person there you go so when you go to take your cse what i learned to do is they love they love freebies so like anything that is free anything that you don't have to like run a test for do it like vital signs just look up at the monitor click that you can never go wrong with seeing that like, telling them that you want to check the vital signs you can never go wrong pulse breath sounds general appearance those are all really good ones to start out and then you can kind of base the rest of your diagnostic choosing on that so if it's not an emergent situation and the person is not actively dying they have a fever and they're complaining of shortness of breath do the blood work do the cbc do the abg do it and then if the cbc says that their white blood count is you know twelve thousand, hey they are probably gonna need antibiotics or they've got a hyperlucent 
lung fields or a history of COPD, they've probably got pneumonia. They also have crackles, yeah, probably pneumonia. So they're going to need a chest x-ray. So it all just kind of, it kind of ties in together. So do the simple things first. Again, if it's not an emergent situation where the person is like close to death, do the ABG baby, just do it, it's fine. It, it'll be fine, just do the ABG. My very last piece of advice and this goes for both tests. Do not, do not, well, for the CSE, you can't really not do this. Because look, okay, look, hold on, hold on for a second. So the thing that sucks for the CSE is that once you click something, you can't unclick it. Like there's no like click, oh, well, never mind. I don't want to do that. Let me uncheck that box. No, once you check that box, that answer is already set. So you can't take it back. So this next piece kind of really only goes for the, T uh, the TMC. Do not second guess yourself. Do not change your answers. Do not go back and relook over your tests and kind of, you know, see like, mm, I'm not really feeling it anymore. Let me just change my answer. Don't do that. Because the moment you do that, you are more likely changing your answer from the correct answer to the incorrect answer. So do not do that. But this, this next piece of advice does go for both tests and it's trust your gut. You know the answer, you're well educated on this stuff, you know how to do it, like you know what you need, do not second guess yourself. That is the worst thing that you can do. Also, do not go in super nervous and antsy because in the beginning, until you get a little more settled down, it will really mess you up. It did that to me like at the beginning of each test I went in there super nervous and at the beginning I was like oh my god there's no freaking way I'm gonna pass these tests like I'm just I'm gonna fail and it's gonna be awful and I'm never gonna be a respiratory therapist do not have that mindset do not have that mindset you are going to be fine I'm trying to think if there's anything else but I don't think that there's anything else. I think that's it. Please reach out with questions. Like I will help you as best as I can. If something that I explained didn't really make sense because I am so terrible at explaining things, please ask me, especially with like the CSE and how it's set up. Do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I'm here to help you. I will help you as much as I can to the best of my abilities because I wish there was somebody to help me and I didn't have anybody to reach out to, or I was too scared, too shy, do not. Please ask me. And if I don't know, I'll tell you. I don't know. But I'll point you in a different direction if I can. So please ask me questions if you have any questions, if there's something that I can elaborate on, if there's another video that you want to see, if you need tips on how to do something else, I will gladly do that for you. But yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video made sense. Good luck on your tests. Congrats on getting into RT school. You guys are going to do great. You guys are smart. You're going to make it. You're going to do it. You can do this. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.